We are legends. Welcome to We Are Legends. Hello and welcome to the next episode of The Odds Men. I'm HP7240, <laughs> and with me is Zoom and Ogre. <laughs> and with us today, we have a special guest, Slow Beast, from <laughs> We Are Legends. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so today we're going to do our episode a little more, a little different. We're just going to have a community discussion. Ogre and Doom and I were able to do a special segment with the developers and actually get to see the Nukers ahead of time. They wanted to basically let us review them so we didn't run into another broad situation, give us our thoughts and opinions on them. So, unfortunately, Ogre wasn't able to actually come to it, but he got to see the kits and a little bit of uh, the after video. And then Doom also led the call and gave us his opinions on the, on the video. So, Doom, if you want to take it away, what did you think of everything that you saw? I mean, I was very opinionated, as you very well know. <laughs> I mean, it's odd to say. I guess I would call it a return to form. Because we went from, what, super fast crit meta to anti-crit meta to some weird conglomerate meta to now we're in sort of a control uh, sustained damage meta. And it feels like with the new characters, we're kind of going back to a fast meta again. Yeah, at least with Kid Flash, we're definitely going to see that, because he is pretty ridiculous based on his kit and what we saw on the couple videos we got to see. Um, <clears throat> Ogre, you d you saw the videos, correct? Yeah, I saw the videos. What do you think of Kid Flash? We'll start with him. He, he looked good. Like, his kit looked really entertaining, at very least. <laughs> yeah. So. I really liked his... Um, I liked the... He's... And he's not going to have high damage from what we saw and what we were told, but he does. His being able to steal turn meter from enemies is just. I think that's going to be almost brokenly good. That's really good, yeah. And then the transferring speed downs from from team to random enemies. So if you have speed downs on your team, and then the fact that they. Oh no, the opposing clayface! What did you do to your team? Exactly. <laughs> so I I like the idea because, and you guys even talked about it in your podcast. Um, how you just see Clayface everywhere, and I think this will help neutralize him a little bit. Hope so. His triple th threat, his uh, third main ability where he charges all over the screen, I love that animation. That is such a cool animation. Yeah, his animations are so much fun. And then, once again, there's just more turn meter up, more speed ups, speed downs. I mean, he just, he's he's got such a cool kit, and I'm, I'm not a huge kid. Didn't he also have, like, a team heal? Like, a really small team heal? It's, uh... Individual heal when he gets up to four speed. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Thirty-five percent chance to light heal a random ally if Kid Flash has four plus speed ups at the end of his turn. Oh, fifty percent at the end. And granted, this what we're saying now could slightly change. The official write up isn't out yet, so there may have been some tweaks since we saw him. Yeah. But <clears throat> he definitely seems like a really cool character. Um, I know you were real opinion debated about him, Doom. What are your thoughts on Kid Flash alone? Uh, the way I put it to uh, paper was more that he's kind of like a, uh, he's like Castaway Green Arrow plus one in a way, because, I mean, aside from his broken passive, you didn't pick Castaway for much more than, oh, well, you get to turn meter down everyone before they get a turn. So he basically fills that role. His damage is low, which is good. That's a fantastic balance. Yeah, where Castaway but, uh, did too much damage for everything he could do at the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think he's honestly a pretty good fit for the game, especially at the moment. And, uh, I don't know. As long as his light heal isn't completely insignificant, I think he's going to be a good meta pick. But I don't think he's going to make it so that he has to be in every team. You know what I mean? I'm excited yeah. to see maybe, you know, Flash. I think he might actually make Flash somewhat viable, potentially. Mm -hmm. Now, something I wondered, so you know how his ability steals turn meter and gives it to someone else, right? Yep. If the enemy has no turn meter, like say they just took their turn, does it still 
give the full amount of turn meter back? Probably, but it's one of those things I plan to test. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't think about that one. I love the idea of stealing the turn meter, though. Yeah, I had a question. I had a few questions about stealing the turn meter. Is there any gating on that, or is, and does it do any damage? Well, it's on his basic, which is even more ridiculous, but his <clears throat> his ability is damage to an enemy plus 30% damage if enemy has speed down, which it seems like it's pretty light damage, so that's not a big deal. But then his legendary upgrade is steal a maximum of 25% turn meter from the enemy and apply it to random ally. Actually, now that you mention it, Doom, um, I think if they don't have turn meter, I don't. I think he, it says a maximum of 25%. So if they have less, it doesn't say. I was gonna say it doesn't say minimum though. Well, if they don't have any turn meter to steal. Yeah, that'll be interesting. You'll have to test. Yeah, that. it really, it really sounds like if they have like five percent turn meter or something, that they're gonna steal the five percent and give five percent to somebody else. That's Wouldn't what it sounds like. That makes it a little less broken. Yeah, and then uh, as Doom was asking, what happens to the turn meter of the person that you stole uh, if they have zero? What happens to them? Well, I have a feeling that they don't steal anything if there's zero. Well, yeah, I mean, based on way you'd be reads. surprised. Uh, back when Killer Frost first got released, she had that ability that was like, remove all shields. But the game misread it, and it actually put an anti-shield on those opponents where they couldn't generate a shield until they covered up their full shield amount. <laughs> so be hilarious if they had to... Yeah, wouldn't that be funny? Oh, that'd be Flash bad. punches someone, steals 5%, and then puts negative 20% turn meter on them. That'd be ridiculous. Yeah, he, funny. he seems like he's going to be a great character. I mean, he's got he's got a lot of cool abilities. Um, that second ability where he can apply three speed downs to an enemy for two turns and then steal up to three speed ups. And then another 50% chance to gain two speed ups, and that's before you even add his legendary. That's, I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And now let's go on to I the... Really, honestly, I'm looking forward to him with, like, Ivy and hero challenges. Oh, yeah, that's going to be insane. I, I really think that the speed-up, speed-down teams, especially with Grodd, with him, are going to be pretty ridiculous. I hope so. <laughs> especially if Grodd gets tweaked the way we hope he's going to get tweaked. Yeah, really just, it really depends on what they do with him. Um, next on the list, and the most important character in this release, is Starfire, which... <laughs> Oh, uh, that sounded like Baby for God. You. I had to do it for you. <laughs> that sounded like a, a, a chimpanzee being <laughs> butchered. <laughs> uh, I had to do it for you, hey, man. Sorry. All right. So, Starfire, let's talk about I I'm actually, I love her kit. Like, I think they... Did it just right with her, and he, and then after watching the to, video, to be I, fair, you would have loved it regardless. I know I was very opinionated about this because if they didn't make her good, I was gonna raise hell. So, <laughs> but she's set up so that she can be. I think she will fit on. She could be your only energy character on really any team and be fine, because her basic can't miss, which is fantastic, and then it's you know just does a good amount of special damage and gives her intellect up, which is or. It, the maximum it always gains three intellect up when she attacks, so that's that's a decent basic. That's not, and the fact that it can't miss is great. Her second ability, having the special damage and always applying three hit chance downs, I love. Um, which I know Doom, how much you like hit chance down. So mm -hmm. that, and then the evasions, and then she also applies three evasion downs, so she's good against the anti evasion characters, and then her um. Legendary upgrade is she has a 25% chance to stun, or a 75% chance that they have evasion up. So as often as you see evasion characters anymore, it's nice to just, that she she isn't designed to be like a 100% anti-evasion character, but she has a lot of anti-evasion abilities just built into her kit. Then her main ability, the supernova, does heavy special damage to all energies, and then she loses her intellect ups. Which it sounds like she doesn't have to go crazy to get her intellect up, but she has... It does a, a huge amount of damage, so you'll be able to wipe out just about everybody on the map, and then you can pair her with the Intellect Up characters to do even more damage, which I, she's another one that probably will pair great with Grodd. So Grodd may actually see some good play, especially if he gets a buff. I said Dr. Fate sounds good, too. And then her Legendary Upgrades, plus 25% chance if she has five Intellect Ups, so you could definitely do a ton of damage. Or not 25% chance, plus 25% special damage. 
And then her passive is a uh, 30% chance to gain two intellect ups and 25% turn meter anytime it, when an ally receives damage, which allies are going to receive damages all the time. So you're, and I, I'm wondering how that stacks with AOEs. Would, do you think it would? Would assume happen? it would trigger once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if an, her legendary upgrades of an ally dies, she gains two intellect up. And then her cooldown on her big attack is reduced by two. So, I mean, you could be casting her nuke pretty frequently based on that. And then she's got a second passive that, and this is where I really like her, 60% uh, chance to use star bolts on a random enemy when an ally is healed. So you can pair her with healers on your team. And then the coolest thing... Oh my gosh, she's the energy character for Enchantress teams. Exactly. So I'm excited about <laughs> Enchantress or any other healers getting play. And we also did learn and okay. confirm that it works with all the characters that heal. So Bane, Etrigan, all of them. Wow. And then her legendary yeah, upgrades be... also gain death, death immunity. So anytime somebody heals, she gains death immunity and starts proccing her basic, which that sounds pretty ridiculous to me. I'm looking forward to using her. Like, I already fell in love with Enchantress Bane Swamp Thing for healer hero challenges. Throwing her in there sounds like a lot of fun now. Yeah, she just she seems like there's, there's going to be right basic that. attacks flying everywhere. <laughs> so I really, cannot wait to play that. So I'm really excited about her. What's your opinions on her doom? Uh, she sounds like she's going to be pretty insane when paired with the likes of Constantine, because you have the double attacks on his taunt, which she's probably not the tankiest character, but. Yeah. I I think she's probably going to be around his speed, so it should fall off pretty fast. Uh, as far as damage is concerned, I don't know. I see her as like a Firestorm minus one, but Firestorm also requires a lot more setup, so she's going to be good. I agree. She'll probably be the uh, go-to energy for a lot of different teams, especially if you're looking for that juicy AoE damage. So Yeah, that's what I like about pretty her. Good. I can just slot her into a team, and I don't need to swap her in and out too often. She'll be able to I don't need to always slot Steppenwolf or someone to deal with the anti-evasion. She can just kind of fill several roles at once. Yeah, I do like how she's a character that's good enough to stand on her own, but if you build towards her, she becomes insane. Yeah. All right, and let's talk about the one that we're most excited for, which is Blue Beetle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Me and Doom were not overly excited for his <coughs> changes because I didn't see a huge amount of changes, but he did definitely, after watching the video, it seemed like he did a lot more damage than he does now. Uh, he's There wasn't a whole lot of changes. I'm trying to see what exactly they were. The, on his second ability, his changes were he also gains four agility ups. Um, looks like for two his... turns, and then plus one agility up for two turns for a shielded enemy. His basic ignored shields now at legendary too. Yeah, now yeah, now it ignores shields. Um, his beetle blast doesn't look like it changed at all. Which that one really didn't need to. Um, looks like it purges all immunities and awareness if enemies are unshielded. They just added the awareness, and then his shield breaker didn't look like it changed, and then his um his life support instead of having yeah, no, that's the same too. So it wasn't a whole lot of changes to him. It looks like they just added a few things to make him a little more tanky. And I'm not sure if they changed any of his stats, but he definitely seemed like he did a ton of damage. There was one video where he did 96,000 damage to Hal Jordan Green Lantern with his basic. Wow. I think he had a bunch of crit ups too, though. Yeah, he now, did. Now, is he another special damage character? Uh, I think I don't he's think physical. So. I think yeah, he's, he's physical. Yeah, he's all physical. Is he physical? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because he gets strength up, and like, that's what boosts him. Like honestly, oh, yeah. it just okay. seemed like it just seemed like they tweaked his numbers a little bit. Yeah, his um is really what it seemed like. His scarabs, um, it actually says before it was two, and now it's three strengths up for two turns, plus two strengths up for two turns. Yeah, so they instead of doing the crit chance, they give him more strength ups. So, honestly, that's slightly more viable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, consider, if you will, the following, right? Because there's going to be a small rise in stun teams, there's also going to be a small rise in teams with Hal Jordan Leader because AoE stun immunity at the beginning is pretty handy. So Blue Beetle can make a very fine counter pick, especially since, well, now he ignores shields. 
he's just always going to be cranking out that big damage, especially on teams like that. So yeah, and he's more of a niche character. You know, his role is anti shield. He's not going to. He'll work. I think he'll work a little better on normal teams, but you're not going to necessarily want to run him as often unless you're fighting shielded characters. But that's fine. I mean, there need to be characters like that. He reminds me of TDK in his niche. Which he'd be great against TDK, like, speaking of which. So. No, he, he, he would, but that's what I'm saying. Like, he reminds me of that kind of a niche. You're going to see him every now and again on a team because somebody had to bring him for X character, you know, that they were trying to deal with. You know, whether it be Arcus or Hal or somebody, you yeah. know. But you're not going to see him a Or a future lot. shielded character that could be ridiculous. Or, or exactly, yeah. You know, I mean, the game is constantly growing, so it wouldn't be surprising to see more shielded characters at some point. Large place. And now, I'm I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> what, Lord, please. <laughs> and the la- the last character that on the rework, and this one I think is possibly the most ridiculous of the bunch for the reworks, is Terra. I really really like the changes to her kits. Um, I know Doom, you thought that her her shield changing you weren't a big fan of because of the thirty percent, which that may or may not be different depending on when it goes live. But the uh, the main changes were on her basic, now she has a 70% chance to apply heal immunity for two turns. And her evasion downs are just built, in, can't miss and evasion downs are just built into her kit. So that, that's very nice, having a two-turn heal immunity. With a the can't heal. miss not being legendary anymore is important. Exactly. But you do also have to keep in mind that they cut off about four evasion downs from it, so it's not going to be quite as good at completely shutting Harley Quinn out of the game and characters yeah. like that. I think we have enough anti-Harley that I'm not too worried about it, and it, I think she'll do enough to where she'll... Like, yeah. adding the heal immunity just kind of broadens her ability to be used, so I'm, I'm mm-hmm. okay with that. Um, I agree. Okay the big change to um, her rock solid, her the shield that she casts is she applies three agility ups for two turns and then three hit chance ups for two turns to all allies and then she has a 30% chance to apply a 20% shield. And then her So now she applies hit chance ups. Yeah, so now she applies hit chance ups. So that I think that kind of makes up for the evasion downs and then also she her legendary upgrade gives stun immunity for two turns to the team and with the the stun Ooh. meta possibly coming in it's yeah, she's definitely going to be very useful and while even the, you know, you may not be fighting a stun-heavy team. There's enough characters that do stuns. It's nice that you don't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Actually, I actually went over that in uh, my live stream earlier uh, today. Um, there's 22 characters that can stun. That's a lot of. I mean, that's a lot of stuns. Yeah. <clears throat> Her. So, I mean, and not all of them are guaranteed, obviously, but like 22 characters that have at least a chance to stun, and then 11 of those are 100%, whether they're gated or not, it's a different thing, but, like, there's 11 of them that have 100% stun. So, <clears throat> there's plenty of characters out there that will get shut down by this. Then her mm-hmm. AoE, the only change to that one, everything pretty much remained the same on that, but was that she had a 30% chance to use Tremor a second time with a um, 50% damage, I don't, this reads a little funny, with Negative fifty percent damage or negative twenty five percent damage is any enemy silence. So maybe it does less damage. Basically, so what it it's means a fifty percent that... power or seventy five percent power of the base skill, depending if an enemy is silenced. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. That's why so I have you fifty percent damage normally. So if you do two thousand damage normally, you'll do a thousand damage on this one, or if somebody's silenced, you'll do fifteen hundred. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. The her passive. This was another really big change. If I mean, it, it was pretty obvious, Hayden. I don't know why you didn't know yeah, that. Well, you know, I'm a <laughs> hey, math is not everybody's friend. That's yeah. why I'm here. And I'm the banker <laughs> of the group, so. <laughs> so that passive. The passive is her. The biggest change, and I think this is what I think makes her su- such a better character, is that if she has six plus debuffs at the start of her term. Purge her debuffs and trigger meltdown, dealing special damage to all enemies. But it also has a 10% chance to hit allies too at maximum level. So that's that's pretty awesome being able to 
purge all her debuffs right off her, and then do special damage to the enemies. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is her meltdown currently just regular damage? I don't know about that part, and I think that was a question we asked them, and they weren't, they didn't know offhand. Um, but they, I could swear her kit was currently all damage, which is funny because she has a special striker kit or a gear set. Well, her so her third attack it says yeah. it's special damage, and yeah, all her abilities are special damage according to the sheet. And then the <clears throat> the um, the purging the debuffs and dealing the special damage to all enemies. Because right now, whenever you use her, you almost miss everyone every time. It just never hits the enemies, and then it sometimes will hit one of your own characters. So I really like that change. And it's it's fine with me that they left a, a small chance to hit your allies, because that kind of fits Terra as a character. And then her legendary yeah. upgrade was apply 15% shield to allies if any allies under 50% health after meltdown. So shield, I thought that was pretty not awesome. heal. Oh, I'm sorry, 50, 15% shield. So that's, I mean, that's, that is a ridiculous ability now. And you have a ton of debuffs yeah. on your characters, so I think she'll work well against Constantine and uh, Steppenwolf and a lot of the characters that do a huge amount of debuffs. Yeah, Batman Beyond. Harley Quinn. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's, she seems like she's going to be a strong car counter to a ton of characters. Then they also added a new passive to her. Um, it says if Terra triggers Meltdown, 50% chance to give buff immunity two turns. Or 75% chance to give... I think it says 5 to 5 buff immunity. I can't tell what that says. It's cut off. Basically, 75% anyway. chance to add 5 stacks of buff immunity to an enemy, I think. Okay, to a random enemy. Which, I mean, that's pretty awesome. It might be like uh, Swamp Things, where they're randomly distributed. Yeah. I mean, it's only to one person, though, so... Not necessarily. If it's, not if it's like Swamp Things, it could be randomly distributed. Well, well, then that might be broken. We'll yeah. see. And that was and that's <laughs> two turns, too. So, and then she also... As, that's before her legendary upgrade. Her legendary upgrade is grant debuff immunity and plus eight agility ups for two turns to a random ally upon Terra's death. Good lord. <laughs> so, I mean, she, she just seems like she's going to be ridiculous because she already did pretty decent damage. So when you add all this extra stuff to her kit, this is a, I mean, she's a character I'm glad I focused on a long time ago. I think the problem with Terra was that she was so just overshadowed by Stefan Wolf. Yeah, because before Step Wolf, I used her all the time. You know, a lot of people... Well, that's the thing. A lot of people just they stopped using her because Stephen Wolf just did it better. So now she actually has you know a reason to use her over him, I think, so. Yeah, we're getting a lot of really good energy characters, and we've gotten a lot of good mystic characters, so I'm hoping next month brings in a couple physical characters that can compete. Cause to be fair, only... physicals were already way over the top anyway. Oh, for a long, long time. But I think, I think they've had so... their... They're time in the shadow for a while now. Speaking of physical, I don't even think they're in the shadow. They're they're still plenty prevalent. <laughs> I think uh, if I might interject, I think what makes Terra's kit the most interesting is that with Kid Flash, there's a very real, well, pretty real chance that the likes of Emerald Archer and Castaway might come back into the scene. Because imagine Emerald Archer's leader ability plus Kid Flash already eating a bunch of meter, if he hits any crits, which I think he has, like, what, a f the 50% crit chance, then that's an additional big chunk of meter, plus agility downs, plus strength downs. And with Terra, because of her meltdown ability and the agility up and everything else, she provides an even stronger deterrent to doing that in the first place. Yeah. Because you sink one storm of arrows, all of a sudden she's thinking about... I think they said they improved the damage, so maybe it'll be about 3k to everyone on your team. That's pretty bonkers. Wouldn't want to deal with it. So Plus throwing all the debuffs out and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I definitely think Terra's going to be a, a very good character. Somebody you're probably going to want to work on right away. How do you see this meta possibly changing, or do you think we're going to see pretty much the same thing, but with new characters slotted in? Hmm. <laughs> I'll let Ogre start on this one, because I have some thoughts, but I'm going to try to figure out how to condense them. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as it goes, I don't, like, the last few changes to the meta we've seen have just kind of been adding the new characters in. 
I think this is going to continue that trend because I don't think there is a definable meta anymore. It's literally pick counter pick, which is where we're at, which is a good spot to be at. So I don't, again, I don't see, you know, the meta just shifting out of nowhere, but I think all four of these characters are going to play right into it and you'll start seeing them, you know, fairly quickly. Hmm. So what's your I would... not condensed Sorry. version, Doom? <laughs> well, <laughs> the way I see it, the main thing that decides what a meta is is just the sheer mechanic of the game that you can only have four characters, and you want your team to be generally balanced. So when you consider these new characters, you have to consider them in spots going against other characters of similar or the same affinity. For example, Terra. Well, she has to go against the likes of Power Girl. She has to go against the likes of... Actually, I think Power Girl is really the only energy character right now. But you know, Clayface. What I mean. Clayface. Well, no one. She doesn't have to go against Clayface. They do different things. Air Master. Who? <laughs> Mirror Master. Nobody yeah, uses Mirror Master. Yeah. Well, I think Terra. Yeah. Terra's slot will be where you would normally slot. Um, but Steppenwolf. Typically. But, like for example, like there's her and then Blue Beetle. You have to say, hmm. Does Blue Beetle beat this guy better than Etrigan? For some reason, everyone uses him. Or like, uh, let's see, Starfire. Starfire is a character you could probably justify, but again, she has to go against Power Girl. Do you want the special damage? Do you want the physical damage? Are you better with scaling? So I feel like the meta won't shift per se, but it's going to get harder and harder to justify the current meta in comparison to the new, I would say, counter meta picks. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying. I think for the meta to really shift, we need new taunt characters, because if, most people if tend I may. to run a taunt. Why, why don't you speak up, Slow Beast? Well, I just <laughs> wanted to say that I think that a big part of the meta has to do with availability of characters, because uh, what really swings the meta is when a character is readily available, hence why Doombox is so perplexed by the uh, wide use of Etrigan. Etrigan is so widely used because he was a free character. Everybody has him, and he just melts through anyone you put him against. So why would I not? Why would I not take him over a character that is less available? Um, I think that probably sways the meta the most, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean it's very true. He was a free character, and he's very effective at removing, especially energy characters. And I, he can take I understand out what you're saying. I understand what Doombox is saying when he says that. You know, he has certain characters he likes better, but not everybody's dropping the money to get some of these characters or wasn't around to get the characters when they first came out. So I think character availability plays a big part in the meta as well. Um, to not counteract that, but to no, no, provide please, a minor rebuttal, uh, <laughs> I will actually give WB props that they are making a lot of the legacy characters more available. Like, isn't our board clear damage good Joker right now? Oh, it is. <laughs> It's, it's a bad example, but you know what no, I mean? I, you know what? You know what? I, I am what really saying. excited for him. <laughs> I know you I, are, I, Ogre. I know what you're saying, and, and it does seem like more and more lately we have seen some of these harder-to-get characters showing up as uh, easier to get, like Blue Beetle, for instance. It's been impossible to get him for a while, and now he's showing up. Um, it's. I do agree with you there that these characters are coming around, but it's there's still some characters that are not as easily attained, and that's why you see Etrogen and you see Bane and you see a lot of these same characters over and over again because Power Girl on every team. That's why you see them because they were they were so easy to get, uh, oh, no, I, and I everybody agree. seems to have them. I was um, just giving WB some props, credit where it's No, I, I do. I agree with you there. They, they do seem to be making these uh, these harder characters and... and uh, less prevalent characters, more available, which... Yeah, you haven't uh, seen that a lot more that, frequently lately. That would... I can see that change in the meta a lot if if those characters do become available. Like Terra. Terra's going to be available for the first time in how long? Uh, and, and that's going to be awesome. You know, and especially with them changing her kit and making her uh, so great. Now I just need Suicide Squad Deadshot, because he's really the only one I don't have shards of. <laughs> <laughs> You're the exception, not the rule. Hey. He's the only character I think I have left that I don't. I don't have a way to obtain. Actually, I don't have Suicide the... Squad Death Shot either. I only have him, like Legendary too. I don't think I own him. So. Hmm. <clears throat> Anyways. 
<laughs> Anyways. Anyways. As far as, just to get this off my chest, damage goes Joker. I know people have knocked him for a long time, but he existed when the game first started, and it was all speed crit meta before the health changes, before the affinity changes. So yes, he was a bad character then. Nowadays, I think he's actually a pretty good character, considering he has a no-gate, 100%, two-turn cooldown stun. Well, I definitely like, want to. I definitely want to test it. It's now. strong. So I'm working on like not players. only that, but his basic also is an AOE potentially that applies bleeds. Like, it's I'm a good amount of them too. Okay with, it's three bleeds. Yeah, that's up to nine bleeds. Like, come on. And then his passive gangsta uh, removes turn meter, affinity resistance down, and then if it's legendary, removes buffs. Like, I am perfectly okay with this. Like, he's also, really not as bad as people want to think he is. That, uh, variable damage, like, if you high roll that damage, you really high roll that damage, like... I think oh, no, it, yeah, I've seen hundreds of thousands out of him. I think a gear people. 11 with a crit against, let me think, I would think it was like an 8 agility down guy. I ended up getting about 739,000 damage. Good lord. Yeah, it's, it's insane. I, I definitely want to test him out. I'm looking forward to clearing some boards and getting him up. Cause he's, but the problem is, is that he's one of my four characters. I don't have Gear 11. And I want to... Oh, you're going to have to change that. I, yeah, you got to go slow. <laughs> I'm um, And I want to Gear Starfire the day she comes out, or normally I would milk her for two weeks to go to Gear 11, so that would buy me a, another half a month. Fair enough. <clears throat> so it might be a while before I we all know she's going to be your portrait as soon as it's available yeah uh, hopefully her power score is high enough that she takes over Etrigan because <laughs> I made him L5 and I was holding off because I didn't want him to be my portrait but now he's the portrait but I am going to take her to 80 the first day she comes out too so I still need to save a lot of green <laughs> effort she will be my first level 80 nice <laughs> Man, I'm not going to lie, I hope in my heart of hearts that one day I also get my character that I want in the game. Because friggin' Ogre's their promised child, he got an entire sale to himself, Hamiel gets his favorite character, wow. but what no, about... She's a, she was a popular character for a long time, Doombox. not to mention, um, Ogre still hasn't gotten his rework on... on uh... He doesn't need a rework. He looks <laughs> fine. <laughs> he um, needs a tweak. Other than the Suicide Squad Lex, who is your character you're hoping for, Jim? What, to get into the game? Yeah. Booster Gold. Oh, okay. Yeah, if for no other reason... Another popular choice. The, uh, yeah, true. I want, I want him to be uh, an alliance reward like Martian Manhunter. That way we can deal with both... The boosters and the whales at the same time. It'd be funny. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. What were you saying? Um, oh, I was going to say, I, I thought you were waiting for the big Suicide Squad Lex. Yeah, no. I mean, Survival City Lex, not Suicide Squad. Oh, you mean as far as reworks? I just yeah. want him, I just want them to fix them. That's all. Yeah, fix his leader, right? Yeah. I'm just not going to go into a rant about politics. it. But well, anyways, anything else you wanted to discuss while we're on here? Otherwise, we'll uh, wrap this up. Actually, yeah, I wanted to discuss the uh, what you might call it, the uh, the great uh, crossover event between our two podcasts. That and also the there's a character that I wanted to talk about, but I'll go right ahead. You know what? Never mind. I'll save it for the crossover. Oh, you, well, actually, while he's prevalent, I think you want to talk about Etrigan. Not really. He's not as good as everyone says he is, but that, you know, Slobis was right. He's, he's available, and I understand that. I just don't like it. <laughs> well, he is one of the most powerful characters it, in the game. On is offense, it your stance that defense, people aren't playing the game correctly? No, it's just that there's more <laughs> options, but I understand people taking the most prevalent option. Because Deathstroke was never good, but, you know, everyone used him. You still so, 
So when you look at a character on offense, what character can wipe out a team faster than Etrigan can? Solo. Mm, Doomsday. Doomsday takes a long time to build up. Etrigan needs no, he doesn't. one death. Hold on. Okay, well, I can actually list off five, but uh, Doomsday, I can literally clear an entire team on turn one before they get a turn. So, you know, there's that. Uh, uh, Firestorm can clear team way faster than Etrigan. I don't think uh, so. I'd, oh, yeah. I'd like to see. I'd like to see a video of that. Yeah, I would like to video see video of what. Let, let's see. Let's do a video. The, the we'll gauntlet see. has been thrown. You let's, prepare your videos, and we'll com we'll prepare our rebuttals. And uh, during the crossover show, we will. Yeah, we'll do we a Gear battle. Eleven on Gear Eleven action. And we'll do some metric videos. I have Firestorm you, at Gear Eleven. Uh, I'll do a fire. But, you tell me the team, and I'll, I'll and the turn order you want me to run. Yeah, he, he has them. I have them. Oh, Gear yeah. Eleven, <laughs> five, and I'll do it. So then, let me think. It would be what hired gun, dead shot, and then Clayface, Firestorm, and I guess Cheetah. I guess I don't know. That'd be anyway. Yeah, that sounds like a fine combination. Load up a bunch of buffs, get that auto crit maximum buff stack, AOE nuclear fission. Well, I would do um, Dr. Fate over Cheetah so he can get the intellect up. Or yeah, the but yeah, but Firestorm's too fast. Yeah, Dr. Fate's way slower than Firestorm, so uh, Cheetah boosts him to where he's faster than pretty much everyone else. And you also get that nice four stack, plus the chance for the intellect and crit. And then you just have hard gun dead shot, sniper around, whatever blue happens to survive, which I guess would be Etrigan. But I don't, I don't think yep. that, that won't kill Clayface, where Etrigan could take out Clayface. Quite oh, fast. no. It'll, 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 well, maybe not. Clayface might trigger his thing, but I don't think he'd survive the next turn, or literally any turn after that point. So. And then Doomsday is pretty much the same, just you do it with 16 buff Doomsquake. But... His 16, I've, I've run that a bunch of times, but 16 buff Doomquake doesn't do that much damage, is the problem. I don't know. It does enough to kill everyone on my screen, so... Well, you're fighting gear 10s. No, I'm fighting I gear 11s. 5, Maybe you're just bad. <laughs> you're you're down there in the kiddie pool trying to play in the big leagues. <laughs> I mean, you use Etrigan, <laughs> so, I mean, you just... Maybe you're just not playing against good people yourself. Who knows? I, I, oh I agree gosh. with you there, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use what's available to me. <laughs> I actually... Uh... actually Here's the thing, Deathstroke. I will say this: Deathstroke is my is one of my favorite um, DC characters, and I did not use him pretty much through the entire Deathstroke thing. Solely, I actually had him geared out before Deathstroke became got reworked, and I did not use him solely because of the fact that people were uh, misusing him. So I, I, I refrained and did not use him. But now, now I use him occasionally. I'll throw him in there and use him. I've slowed down my Etrigan use just because he's been overused a little, and I get tired of seeing the same teams. Yeah, but honestly, I think Bane is even worse. Yeah, Bane's Etrigan. one thing. Uh, yeah, Bane is, Bane is a monster. Bane is he one is. thing. He really is. They're Bane everywhere. is so easy to kill. I don't know what everybody's complaining about. You know what, though? <laughs> they were the two worst characters in the game. I'm glad they're now the two best, basically. Yeah, I will. Yeah, see. that's true. Bane, Fair enough. Bane, Etrigan, and Swamp Thing, I think, are the three, three most used characters right now. I actually throw a lot of Batman Beyond on my team. Um, I still think Harley sees more play. Yeah, she Harley sees have, a lot she, of play. She's, she's on fifty percent of teams. I will, I will say that. I mean, she's just one of those characters though, that you can literally throw in any team because she's literally a crutch character. I'm sorry. Yeah, she, she is. is. I agree. She's one of like, the better. I'm just tired of seeing her. And, yeah, she's she's everywhere. And that the problem is you have to bring somebody to deal with her to a, a, a certain point, certain degree. Or she will cause your team to lose more frequently than you'd like if you forget to slot somebody in to deal with her. Mm -hmm. That's why I like Doomsday. Yeah, he does, he does deal with her fairly well. I mean, he just doesn't die, so that's. Well, he's. I mean, that's the main benefit. Is what he is, but. <sighs> what a good character. <laughs> 
Also, Constantine. Constantine's the one I wanted to talk about, but I'll save that for the other one. For this podcast, if I if I happen to see, which I haven't seen one in Eon's uh, Doomsday Team, I'm going to make sure I use that trigger and kill him on turn one. You have to. You can try. <laughs> Jeez. Well, he'll start overhealed, and then he'll just yeah. uh, double hit him twice, and he's gone. Yep. <clears throat> and then he'll buff, and, and then, then I'll AOE the rest of the team. When I run into one of the many, many, many Etrigan teams, I'll take great fun in the fact that he can't survive past Swamp Thing's third ability. Well, nothing's and then, past Swamp Thing's third ability. You know, then we can both laugh, because <laughs> you're wasting your turns attacking a tank, and I'm spending one turn putting heal immunity on a character that has literally nothing else to bring to the table. Win-win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Fire uh, breath. Oh, I guess I'll just take this 4,000 damage. Ooh. Spooky. <laughs> oh, no. He might attack me twice if he's overhealed and lands a 70% coin flip. And then I'm going to take a whole 10k out of my 35k health. Oh, no. Oh, he wait. Will, I punched you, you once and then got it all back. Never mind. Send me some uh, <laughs> send me some Doomsday versus Etrigan video, and I'll even post it on the podcast YouTube version. You know what? You know what? Camo beats Doomsday. Etrigan beats Camo. Doomsday beats his Etrigan. There we go. We got our triangle. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think Doomsday, Doomsday doesn't beat, beat Etrigan. No, no. All right. No. Hey, I got I to gotta go. All right. Bye, guys. Later it slow. was great talking Later to you, Doom and Ogre. <laughs> Later, slow. Bye. Next time on... We are legends. <laughs> and then I'm gonna have And the oddsmen. <laughs> he was getting mocked anyway, by children. Don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about this next time. I don't want to rant this time. I'm trying to be good. Do you like the show? Consider becoming a patron and get a special show each month, our special Q and A episode. It's only a dollar to have access to this. Check it out at patreon.com. We are our legends. Thanks for listening. <laughs> You're not gonna say anything? Legend.